reason right there. That's fair enough, but that doesn't put them to bed. Okay. Welcome to the WAN Show, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. We've got a fantastic show lined up for you today. Yeah. But unfortunately, Luke can't stay for all of it because he has to go home and put his birds to bed. <laughs> That's right. We're going to be talking home automation. I do have an update on the Jasco switch situation. And uh. hey, if I'm getting rid of all of my switches, I may mm. have a recipient <laughs> for my donation because Luke has to go home to turn off a light so his bird will go to sleep. An impressive amount of stuff in my house is literally your old things. I'll also be updating you guys on the state of the lab. We took possession on Wednesday and I got a chance to go over there today and it's not good. Um, what else we got today? We have a question about Roku devices. We want to know why you use them. Um, I would read from the doc for this question, but it would be the length of a full video. So we'll ho hopefully uh, communicate with the audience as much as possible. Also, Canadians are up in arms because Tim Hortons has been tracking people. Canadians are also up in arms over uh, Bill C-11 or whatever. Uh, that's supposed to be in the dock today, but I guess we won't be talking about that in detail. Uh, let's go ahead and roll that intro. <laughs> The show is brought to you guys by Squarespace, Zoho Desk, and Wellfront today. Let's jump right into our headline topic. You haven't seen the lab no. at all yet, have you? I've seen you? the outside of the building. That's it. All right. <clears throat> when I saw it, okay, it's about 20,000 square feet. It's a big building. It's right on the end of this street. Like I could almost hork from here to there. Uh, it's got a lot of things going for it. It has a ton of power. Yeah, lots. It's big enough that we can grow into it for quite some time. Like we could have a team of 30, 40 people working out of there between developers, engineers, writing. We could have a ton of creation going on over there. Um, did I already mention it has a ton of power coming into it? Lots. Tons of power, like large literally 300,000 watts of power. Well, it used to be like a machine shop or something, right? Yeah, it used yeah. to be a sheet metal fabrication yeah. place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it has a lot going for it. When I saw it, it was all kind of humming. You know, there was a business running out of there and um, they, everything seemed like kind of at least, you know, presentable. Well, unfortunately, between the things that they were supposed to do, okay? The things the seller was supposed to take care of, like replacing ceiling tiles that had been stained by previous leaks or uh, patching up holes. Um, and the things that were just kind of concealed by the existing equipment. Right. It is an estate that is literally six figures worse than I had anticipated. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And then you know I see that why you're upset now. you know that tone? You know when my phone yes. ringer went off yep. right before the start of the show and I was like, Oh, this is this That's is worse. worse. Yeah. Okay, so that is for I can't name this person yet. They're still on their probation. Um, but you know who they are. One uh one, Got it. Yep. one of those. Hi Gary and Linus. After doing a bunch of digging, I found a used EMC chamber that's fit for purpose. The quote on it is 50,000 US dollars. That's the deal one. Nice. <laughs> Why don't we talk through some of the deficiencies at the new place? Okay. Okay, first things first, they they just outright ripped out um, some of the uh, some of the things that were supposed to stay. For example, oh. there's a safety rail up on one of the balconies Why would that, they take that off? okay, so well, they didn't just take it off, okay? If they had just taken it off, that might have actually been better. There were air compressors up there that we knew they were going to take with them. That's equipment that you might want to take with you. Sure. But instead of dragging them down the stairs the hard way, they just took a sawzall oh. or a or a roto zip or something. <laughs> cut off 
the safety rails so that they could get a forklift up there, grabbed it and booked it. And we're sitting here going, so now you've basically taken a, taken a building that was up to safety code. You have unsafety codified it and just left this like 80 pound hunk of steel or actually multiple ones just left them there. Hey, you can bring that to a scrapyard and hey, get some money. Hey, thanks for that. Like five bucks. I, and it's just like weird stuff they took with them, okay? I have never, I've never seen, I've never seen anything like it. They took the paper towel dispensers off the bathroom walls. <laughs> and I'm they might need those in the new place. <laughs> well, right, but that's the kind of thing that's typically included in a base yes. building. Yeah. They left the toilet paper dispensers, but not the paper towel, oh no, not the paper towel dispensers. They took doorknobs. <laughs> now to be clear, they were combination door locks, doorknobs, which I mean, not electronic ones, not fancy ones in any way. I, I could see them wanting to take those with them, but you're supposed to replace them with something. So as it is, you just stick a screwdriver in the thing. Nice. And I'm I'm just I'm sitting here going this is this is ridiculous. That's legit. You should like weld in uh, LTT screwdrivers to all the doors and just have that be the doorknobs. No. <laughs> no. No. It would look cool. No. Constant sponsorship every video. <laughs> Basically, okay. can I'm really you go frustrated. after them for this? Unfortunately, there is no Okay. I don't know where you guys live, but depending on the market that you're in, um, consumer protections or buyer protections in real estate have been significantly eroded yeah. over, well, the last quite a few years to the point where, you know, when Yvonne and I bought our, bought our house, our, our first home, um, it was normal for us to have like a multi-week due diligence period where we could go arrange our financing after making an offer, get a proper thorough home inspection yeah. so that the so that the purchase agreement could have all the details for the things that need to be fixed before we move in. Um, and there would be, you know, a reasonable in good faith negotiation process over these potential issues. For example, the house that that we lived in for 10 years, um, the previous owners, uh, our our home inspector noted that the water tank was like on its last legs. It was going to go. And so the previous owners, in order to get the deal done, split the cost of that, that water tank with us so that when we were buying the home, it would be in a reasonable, ready to move into state. Well, that's gone. Like in the lower mainland, they're, I mean, they are trying. They are now talking about legislation that is going to eliminate blind bidding, for example. Good. They yeah. are talking about legislation to have a mandatory cool down period. So after an offer, you have a, a mandatory period of time where you're allowed to go through that due diligence. It's not long enough, what I've seen proposed, not nearly long enough, but they're starting to do something, but it doesn't exist right now. So commercial real estate here is not quite as bad. It's not, it has not gotten quite as bad as residential, but it's getting there. It's getting really rough. And we're at a point now where we did, we did do an inspection. So the, the, the base building envelope is at least sound, you know, but those little details are things that you have essentially no, no leverage on. And what we know is that after we made our offer, another offer came in higher after our offer had been accepted. So we knew that if we came in and we pushed back and we said, hey, we want you guys to fix up this and, and do that and ensure X and Y and Z. Or uh, just go with the other They could have basically just kind of said no. And our options would have been accept no for an answer or let the offer lapse and they just take a different offer. So if we wanted to close the deal, which, like I said, there are a lot of benefits to it in terms of location, in terms of size. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a very nice building, which is actually our advantage. It's not well set up for... for sh it's large enough that you should be running, you know, significant amounts of, of shipping in and out of it. Like, it's 20,000 square feet. Um, but it's really not set up very well for truck access. So it's like kind of a crappy building. But because all we need is a ton of power... A ton of space and backpack storage. 
and backpack storage. Sorry, Cougar. Um, potentially. Um, is perfect for us, right? So it, a lot of stars aligned. So what choice did we have, really? Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. Um, I mean, I could go on. We filmed a video while we were over there. James, Yvonne, and I. Uh, James was the only one who knew exactly where we were planning to put people. There's just, man, there's a lot of stuff that I just feel like a combination of, I wish I'd looked a little closer. Not that it would have made a difference. We would have done it anyway. There's no other building. It's kind of like, it's kind of like buying a new car and then getting it home and realizing like your favorite, your favorite uh, man, coffee I, mug I doesn't fit in really the cup holder. fit that well here or whatever. Yeah. yeah, 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 ju- yeah. Just little things like that. Or <clears throat> holy crap, it doesn't support Android auto. It only supports CarPlay and I'm an Android kind of character. I like, I, uh, I, I didn't realize iPhone, it takes but... premium gas. I don't want to pay for that. Yeah. yeah see, the nothing that's a deal breaker. You probably would have bought the same car anyway, but like, oh, uh, like, instead of, instead of walking around it and being like, ooh, shiny, excite. I'm a little frustrated. I'm a little disappointed. And I wish that I wish I had been a little more prepared. It should just and like like you're talking about like the laws here should probably just be better. But like you shouldn't be able to go into a building that <laughs> you're handing off and just chop stuff up. Like the like the railings. Like the door handles. No, that's pretty crappy. The door handles should move. be there. There should be some form of door handle. Yes. I, like you said, though, they could take the like smart ones, whatever, and then put in like fairly Something. standard door handles. Yes. As long as they're door handles that function. Yes. Whatever. But like, so that should be done. You shouldn't be able to completely remove functionality of a door. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then also you shouldn't just like chop up safety railings. Like that's both of those things are crazy. Yeah. Like neither neither of these are like somewhat reasonable. The thing to understand too is that there's three parties involved. There's the buyer, the seller, and the tenant. So it was the tenant going and they don't care. It's not their deal. They don't the, oh. the odds of the seller, even if we do come back to the seller and be like, um, actually, no, this does need to be fixed, the odds of them going and chasing this prior tenant and retrieving it basically minimal so they went in there and went okay. well, as long as we don't do like a hundred grand worth of damage to this place it's unlikely to be worth the cost of pursuing this legally so we can just go for it yikes let's talk about the good things yikes the labs team is up to i believe six people now yeah they're working out of the old creator warehouse space. Um, Gary got deported. It's complicated, but yep. he'll be back. <laughs> um, so he's working out of where he used to live for for now. Yeah, uh, I keep here. I keep thinking that he's here, and then hearing that he's not, and I'm like, Yeah, it's oh, complicated. Okay. Um. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, right. Some other good things about the lab. The line of sight between the existing office and the lab looks good. So we should be able to set up nice. Wi-Fi dishes. Nice. That's going to be pretty cool. Um, what else is good? There's right? already been some really good work done. Yep. I mean, uh, 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 this is apparently a deal. So I'm apparently getting a deal on uh, on an anechoic chamber. So... <laughs> That's good. How big is it? I mean, it looks it looks pretty sick. Is that like walking? It's three meters. So like, that looks pretty cool. Oh, that's not small. That makes sense that it's that expensive. I thought this was like, okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, so that's... Things that big are going to, yeah, they're going to cost some moolah. Is it like on springs or anything? Um... I guess you could just mount it however you wanted. I'm adding Yvonne to he's, this. He's and just, flustered. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta. He's flustered. It's okay. We gotta do stuff. Be all right. um, we'll make it. Oh man, there's. Uh, oh, oh man, I found out my office is smaller than I thought. Oh no, my, my office is gonna get smaller again. Oh, Daddy Linus. Okay, come <laughs> it's on. It's a small office <laughs> with the two windows, <laughs> but it's too small. <laughs> You know, I don't have to give you one. You're not. <laughs> I, we, I thought we did. Not really. I thought we established this. A call room. Yeah, but it's yours whenever you want it. Do you want to show up to my call room? Um, no, you can come to my <laughs> office. It's actually not really big enough to like meet with multiple people and also have my oh, desk in it. that's not great. Yeah, yeah, like it's... Wait, how small is it then? It's, compare, can you compare it to like this room? Uh, It's maybe to like that, that kind of almost vertical two by six. 
No, okay. it's not that big, actually. Maybe more like to that light. And then like to here. Yeah. You like, can fit people in there. Well, I mean, I need my desk in there too. Yeah. And stuff. And like, I'd like to have a test bench and stuff. Oh, so like you want to translate the same setup? Yeah, like I'd want. Is it smaller than that one? Yeah, it's smaller than my existing. So I went Hmm. from I went from I had the biggest office in this building to Yvonne took it, and then I went into your old office. Yvonne shares hers with like two other people. One other person, two. You're right. You're right. You're right. So I had I had like I had like the king office, and then I went to the one that we built for you, and then you got none, and then now I'm actually downgrading again, and um, I guess what we could probably infer from the fact that I am getting a smaller one and your new one is smaller than my new one <laughs> is that yours will be a significant downgrade from your old one. Yeah. Um, I don't need a big office though. Yeah. I you, would meet with probably a maximum of one person at a time or it would just make more sense to go to a conference room. Okay, that's another thing. The place we had planned to put the server room, the walls don't go all the way up. Noise oh. isolation for it is going to be a significant challenge. Everything can be overcome. I mean, that's not good. Everything can be overcome. It's just you raise the walls. Money. Yeah. Yeah. Time. Yeah. No. Mm. Changing out the walls going to be a challenge because we, just, like, because of the parking being maxed out, we can't make any actual structural changes to the building. So I don't know. Maybe we just huck a bunch Would of that like be structural rock wool up there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like you can't change the floor plan essentially oh so it's not a room no it's got like it. a, it's like a half wall up to a t-bar drop ceiling got it yeah it's okay. not it's not a real wall yeah uh we did find a place for a fire pole so that's good are you actually doing it no okay definitely not yeah i'm excited to move in i guess that's part of why i'm so disappointed because i was really excited to move in and today reality hit me like a sledgehammer to the face that I am not moving in anytime soon. I and nobody else are moving in in at least like a couple months. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be rough. Sounds like I'm working from home for a bit more, boys. For a bit more. (laughs) Yep. I hope you've got air conditioning at your house. I do, actually. Good. Excellent. Yeah. That worked out for everyone. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. I'm fine. What do you want to talk about next? Why don't you pick a topic? Because I just... I can't right now. I'm sorry. Update on the Jazzco situation. Will this make you happy? No. Okay. All right. okay. I thought it was no, good. Fine. I thought it was good. No, we can go to something else. No, I'll update uh, it. Tim okay. Hortons is tracking your bits. No, that's not good news either, Luke. Uh. <laughs> Let's talk Jazzco. Last week, I talked about the situation where Jazzco, the manufacturer of the motion sensing smart switches that I installed in my new house, refused to provide updated firmware for the switches after Jake and I experienced um, buggy behavior. We have since done a lot of troubleshooting. We've gone back and forth with Jazzco, and there are a few noteworthy outcomes here. Outcome number one is that Jazzco has publicly stated that they will engage with the community in in good faith on the issue of firmware availability. Whether this ends up looking like you request it from them and they provide it or a download page on their website, that's yet to be seen, but they've had high level discussions internally and it looks like that's something that's going to change. Very good. So that is excellent news. Awesome. Great. Bad news. Oh, more good news first. More good news. I don't know what was going on. Well, we have an idea what's going on. We'll give you more details on that in a moment, but... um, I did manage to disable the motion sensor. So I went and I, bet, I tried again. And remember that issue I had where I thought maybe a firmware update would fix not being able to disable the motion sensor on it? Well, I tried it and Just I like worked was time? able to disable the motion nice. sensor. Gotta love when troubleshooting happens that yeah. way. So <laughs> maybe I don't need new firmware. Also, you should in other have news, access to new firmware anyway. Jasco mixed up their hexadecimal and their binary and the firmware. Uh, what, sorry, hexadecimal and... Hold on, hold on. Let me double check. I mean, that could be a thing, but I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Uh, let's... Uh, they actually, ba-ba-ba-ba. like, talk to you about this in an email? Uh, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. That's a lot of emails. Uh, so they, they mixed up their... So when certifying the firmware with the Z-Wave Alliance, you must fill out the form using hexadecimal format. This was entered in as 32 and was incorrectly translated from hex, oh, sorry, to decimal as 50. The correct version for that certification should be 32. So 
the so-called 5.50 firmware is the one that I was using. They do not have updated firmware. They did send me the files, so I can try to reflash and see if that fixes any potential issue. Jake validated this already, so you don't have to check and see if there's oh, I'm not. checks out. Yeah. Um, but then I was able to disable the motion anyway. But then I was able to replicate the issue where I was not able to disable the motion because I went to adopt yet another switch and it actually grabbed the same device number within the like the Z-Wave JS thing in Home Assistant. And then like neither of them would work properly until I uh, I disconnected both of them and then adopt them both, ad adopted them both again, and then they would work. So it, it could still, there could still be buggy behavior. We don't know whether that is on Home Assistant or or uh, I think it's like a Z-Wave.js or something Completely like that. Completely regardless, you should or still Jasco. be able to access the firmware. And stuff. Yes, you yeah. should still have access to firmware. I was still right to be mad about the fact that they would not give me firmware because I would have been far less mad if I just had bought a buggy product. I still would have been mad. I have also found bugs that have not been resolved. For example, the, the By timeout. the firmware? Is by anything. Saying? Okay. Yeah, by, by anything. So the timeout. So you would think, at least I believe that's what this parameter does. Disclaimer, I don't know, maybe it does something else entirely. I, I don't know. But I would think that on a motion sensor, a timeout field would affect how long it is until the motion sensor kicks back in. So if I, if I were to turn it off, if it were to turn off, how long before it starts sensing again? And as it is, they're immediate out of the box. So you can press the button to leave the bathroom. And as you walk away, it'll turn back on. That's obviously not a desirable behavior. So I think that's what that field's supposed to do. Okay. Changing that does not appear to affect anything. There's also a vacancy mode. Vacancy mode's kind of cool. So occupancy mode turns on the light when it senses motion and then turns off the light when it stops sensing motion, right? Vacancy mode will only turn on the light when you turn it on, and then it will turn it off when you leave. Vacancy mode does not appear to be functioning correctly. But again, mm. I don't know whose fault that is, so I'm not going to point any fingers yet. Sure. What I do know is that there have been other developments. Seeing the problems that I was having with Jasco, I've had um, one of the Switch companies that a lot of people actually said that I should check out in the comments under last week's WAN show. One of them reached out. Uh, Inavelli, I want to say? In, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Inavelli reached out. Um, AEOTech reached out. I think you mentioned in Inavelli in the, on the show. And there's... Yeah. Yeah, so Inavelli reached out. Uh, AEOTech reached out. And actually, there's another Switch company that um, that Jake found that is so cool. You should have a battle. Where you should get that? like a sample set of switches from each one and have like a a uh, battle royale. Realistically, that's what we probably should have done. But one lives. we just like are very busy. Die. We're very busy people. And it's like, it's tough. Oh, but it's a video. It's content. If content. you don't have time, you don't have time. Content. Luke. Okay, check these out, okay? Swidget. <laughs> Apparently, these guys are... Oh, my... Stop, enough. Apparently, these guys are Canadian. Oh. These are modular. Oh. Modular smart home switches. What? So they've got humidity sensors, motion sensors. Whoa, uh, you can that's just put cool. Like a U you can put a USB port in there. They're kind of fugly, um, in my humble opinion. Sorry, Swidget. I don't think they're that bad. But in terms of functionality, this looks flipping amazing so being able to just be like yeah hey couldn't help noticing that it's a little humid in here don't mind me gonna switch on your fan in the bathroom do you care about the aesthetics of the switch if it felt good if the haptics were good oh would that overpower the aesthetics that's of the switch? far more important yeah, yeah i agree i mean that's yeah. the main reason that i didn't go with um caseta or whatever uh, who's who's the parent brand uh for ugh, smart switches Caseta, is it Lutron? Lutron, yeah. That's why I didn't go with those because they feel awful, like yeah. just abhorrent. If I ever have to actually use them with my fingers, it's it's like I, I just I feel guilty spending money on them. <laughs> like I just I can't believe I gave them money for. You know what? You want to reward that like terrible yeah. haptics. Yeah, haptics wait, are important. Way to way to cheap out in the most obvious 
user facing kind of way. You idiots. <laughs> like just that kind of thing, you know? Yeah. It's tough. For sure. So Jasco situation. Still developing. The first video on it is gonna be edited when Jake's back from uh back from vacation. So whenever that happens, and sure. we will hopefully get you guys completely up to speed. You'll get to live through the frustration with us. It's definitely worth a watch. Just because I, I don't remember the last time my anger was that white hot. <laughs> Man, when I when I was, was always on, fun. When I was on the phone and they were like, sorry, sir, we do not provide firmware. That's proprietary. I'm like, uh, I will. I do applaud their change of stance. Me too. Credit where it's due. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There is an enormous difference between having a you know an ass backwards way of thinking and doubling down on it, and having an ass backwards way of thinking and someone honestly not that nicely. Yeah. Sure. Telling you that your way of thinking is ass backwards and still having the maturity to self-reflect and go... I respect that a ton. I you think know what? that's huge. Okay. Yeah. It's time to change. Yeah. And Massive. if they actually follow through fully, because there's still some some follow through, right? Yes. But if they actually follow through fully, that's huge and very cool, and I respect it deeply. But there's the public commitment. They are publicly in touch with Home Assistant. That's a big deal. That's cool. That's a huge deal for Super the DIY cool. community. And yeah. the more and and you gotta understand, like, there is absolutely attention on this. And seeing Jasco reverse, seeing Jasco embrace this, I guarantee you that'll put pressure on other players in the industry absolutely. to take a more open approach. And that's what we need because that's what's breaking smart home stuff. That's what's killing the adoption. Is you've got all these horrible fragmented ecosystems and you know as a consumer right let's say i couldn't afford to replace all the switches in my house like the vast majority of people let's say i wanted to upgrade piecemeal how do i know which one is still going to exist for me to actually get another one in a year or two years or five years so knowing that these are open and they can all ultimately be tied together is very so, cool. It's critical yeah. because otherwise, why would you take that first step? Why would you get a smart switch so that you can turn your bird's stupid light on from a distance instead of driving all the way home to turn a light on or off to put your bird to bed? What is wrong with you? Sorry, more, those of you who more missed it. Luke's excuse for not coming there's over to more, watch a movie with me. more complications Luke's than that. For not coming over to watch a movie with me tonight is that he has to go home so he can turn off the light turn so he can light. put his bird to bed. Luke, and then put them to bed later. Please explain. <laughs> so, uh, okay. So there's two things going on here. One is that the birds have to go to bed eventually. Mm -hmm. My girlfriend gets home from work really late. And the second really is you are a giant bird simp. And the second, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, and the, the second is that they are they have extremely extremely bad dark vision. They they become like effectively blind the second it's like dimly lit in the room. Um, like one of the easiest ways to catch them is just have a few light sources that are generally far away and turn off all the close ones, and then you just walk up to them and go like, scoop, because they can't see anything. <laughs> um, so I don't, I, I have mentioned many times, I don't have home automation stuff. I forgot to turn the light on before I leave. Usually I remember. So it's going to be, actually it's summer now. It probably doesn't matter. Actually they're birds and it probably never mattered, but carry on. So it would be really dark and they would be uncomfortable and it would be bad for them. Um, and then it's their bedtime around like 8.30. And sometimes the WAN show can go real late. <laughs> That's fair. Real late. That's fair what you said. So I have to put them to bed. I don't have to like it, but I do have to respect and it. And I, I don't think I'm going to be able to home automate putting them to bed. I bet you could. It's possible. Oh, man. You do it's a little possible. like curtain thing for their thing. It's possible. That would actually be kind of a cool project. It could be kind of neat. We uh, Title. Title for the video. Bell, can you note this down? We solved the world's stupidest problem. <laughs> I mean, I think that would be a great collab with Simone Gertz. Uh, it'd be sweet. Yeah, like just building a stupid machine for a thing that no one should have to do. Okay. 
Luke, you know that not everyone babies their budgie the way that you do, right? Sure. And that your budgies... But I do. Your budgies I am bird are playing you, right? Sure. Okay, I'm just making sure I that... I am bird dad. You am bird dad. <laughs> I don't like this anti-bird stance line. Look, I'm not anti... I'm not anti-birds. Birds aren't real! <laughs> no, Canada is not real. <laughs> or Canada. Neither of them are real. Um... As for Canada geese... Well, they're double not real. They're <laughs> birds and Canadian. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I can make it work. I can make it work. It just probably, I'd have to go home first. That's all. <laughs> I gotta put them to bed, dude. Okay. Why? <laughs> okay. Why? Why don't, why don't we talk? You know what? Let's talk sponsors. Let's get the sponsors out of the way because I got to make some money, ladies and gentlemen. I got an expensive lab to deal with here. The show is brought to you today by Squarespace. Do you think making a website is hard? Well, it is. But if you use Squarespace, it doesn't have to be. With Squarespace, you can have your website up and running in a matter of hours. They have award-winning templates that will make your website stand out from the crowd and... Oh, well, this is kind of redundant. I've talked to I've talked to the business team a lot of times about redundant. I'm not calling out anyone in particular, but uh, redundant Just talking the whole points business team. are not supposed to make their way into. <laughs> so so look, I'm gonna read them. Squarespace has award winning templates that will help make your website stand out. Say goodbye to the drab, GeoCities inspired hellscape, and say hello to Squarespace. Those are basically the same thing. It's it, okay. Plus, if you're interested in how your website's doing, they have built-in tools to help you find out what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. That's unique. Squarespace really does make it a lot easier to make a website. Both our Linus Media Group and LTX Expo websites were built quickly using Squarespace. By the way, LTX Expo is tentatively on for 2023. Let's go, dude. Yeah. Um, and if you ever get stuck, they have a 24-7 support team that's ready to help you out. So go to squarespace.com slash when, and you can get 10% off today. By the way, business team, love you guys. Literally couldn't run this place without you. Yep. I, I'm a feeling a little like uh, uh, um, Adam Sandler and Happy Gilmore, where I like I like crap on the business team. Immediately I come back, well, I'm sorry, baby, I didn't mean that. <laughs> please, please sell more, please sell more sponsorships. Please, please don't go. <laughs> <laughs> come on back, baby. Uh, the show is also brought to you today by Zoho Desk. If you run a business, you know just how important customer service is to retaining your clients. And Zoho Desk is a context-aware help desk to keep your customers happy while your company keeps doing what it does best. What does context-aware mean? Zoho Desk's AI assistant, Zia, helps you quickly see your customer sentiments at a glance, whether from online chats, phone calls, emails, or elsewhere. I'd love to hear what Zia thought about my call with Jasco. Uh, <laughs> let Zoho Desk take care of other tasks so your agents can focus on assisting customers. You can keep your processes fluid with easy automation options and pull up sales or product information with Zoho Desk's built-in document library. Plus, your agents will have access to a ton of different dashboards so they can keep track of metrics like ticket traffic and happiness ratings. That's right. The happiness ratings and how your agents can keep track of that is in the talking points three times. Getting a look from Bell. <laughs> Service is the key to a happy customer. So let Zoho Desk put it at the heart of your company. Find out why 50,000 businesses worldwide trust Zoho Desk for their help desk needs and save 50% with code ZDesk50 with the link down below. Finally, the show is brought to you by Wealthfront. Wealthfront is the automated investment platform that builds a portfolio based on your risk tolerance to help you grow your money long term. If you put off investing because you thought it took a ton of time and research, you got great news. It doesn't have to. Wealthfront makes it super easy to get started. All you need is a few minutes and 500 bucks to open an account. You can set it up, answer some questions, and let Wealthfront take care of the rest, like using Spotify for its personalized playlist based on your taste. Same kind of idea. Or you can actually build your own portfolio with hundreds of investment options across tech, healthcare, real estate, and more. Their tax loss, harvesting, tax loss harvesting software looks for opportunities daily to help you lower your tax bill and boost your after-tax returns. Plus, they're always adding new ETFs over time, each one hand-selected. So whatever your investment goals are, Wealthfront gives you the tools to build your portfolio not just your portfolio, your portfolio, one you can be excited about, and you can get your first $5,000 managed for free at wealthfront.com slash win. All right, let's jump right into our next topic. And this is an interactive topic, ladies and gentlemen. We had a lot Hold of... Hold sorry. I have one question. You mentioned uh, that you had a rant that's in a video that's coming up that's like the angriest you've been in a long time. Mm -hmm. That's not really a question. Is it worse than eggshell? Uh... I think I was, uh, oof. 
So the thing about the this paint was a question issue, brought by the audience. Yeah, the thing about the paint issue is that it had been like a slow burn, right? Like I, it had been one issue after another, after another, after another. We're still not done with the issues with those painters, by the way. Did I talk at all about how like they masking taped everything, even though no professional painter, in my opinion, should be masking everything off with tape like that? You should just know how to cut a straight line with a three inch brush because you're a professional a anyway the Didn't point david is call you out, like super hard masking tape who did i thought it was david called you out in some video because you did a line without masking but it was all messy yes yeah, it's, it's it's good enough it's better than what happens with masking tape oh, okay. especially if you leave it on for too i long. don't know because so I... they left the masking tape on too long and there's places where once they finally ripped it away because it's latex paint it's kind of rubbery it peels away a bunch of the freaking wall too so then what? You're going to go back in with the sandpaper, go cut the line anyway. You might as well just cut it in the first place. Yeah. Basically. Um, so it had been a bit of a slow burn because it was like one issue after another, after another, after another. Whereas the shock, the pure shock and awe of a company telling me that they have firmware. So that, that was a miscommunication, obviously. But the part that wasn't a miscommunication was that they do not provide them to clients. That just it enraged me so this is another level yeah it's like it's like it's sudden BR onset nature. road rage versus like you've had a really long week and you're tired and irritable right okay yeah 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 like yeah, yeah, yeah. that guy cut me off you know like just what exciting who does that Good. who takes the paper towel dispensers Popcorn out moment. of the building and cuts off the safety rails <laughs> are you de did you film yeah nice Yvonne was actually the one who noticed it. I didn't even notice because I was just like, yeah, I'm chill, whatever. I spent like two summers of my life walking around on roofs. I don't care about like an open drop, but from, from a like safety regula regulatory standpoint, right? You do have to care. She was looking at yeah. it going, um, what? <laughs> Money, yeah. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, what are we supposed to be talking about here? Ah, uh, yes, this is an interactive topic. I posted just a little open letter to the float plane community earlier this week, just being like, hey, really appreciate you guys. I think it was the day that the money came out of our account for the lab, and I was feeling a lot of anxiety because it's the most money that we've ever spent. I, I don't know if I've disclosed the amount, but it was 13 13 and a half million dollars by the time all the fees were accounted for. Big bucks. Canadian dollars, I guess, so like 10 US, but that's... I mean, far and away, the most money we've ever spent on everything. To be clear, no, we don't have $10 million in the bank. Um, we financed it, so it was uh, it was 10% down. But that's still a million dollars going out of the bank account. Um, and so I was feeling really stressed out. And I, I was like, you know, needed a minute. And so I, I sat and I just typed up a little thing like, hey, Floatplane, appreciate you. Um, because, yeah, it's not as it's not as big of a driver of overall revenue compared to certain other business units, whether it's like Creator Warehouse or uh, the business team. Again, love you, business team. Real, don't leave me. Um, <laughs> but it's really consistent. Like that yeah. community has stood behind yeah, us. It's growing. Um, yeah, there's almost 21,000. They're almost 21,000 strong. And, you know, those are those are real numbers at that point. You know, I can know that if my if my payments for, for this building are going to be 13 off, actually, yeah, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, which they are that, you know, float is going to be there providing that that consistent income. Right. Like it's it's a big deal. Right. And so I was just like, hey, float plane, appreciate you. Um, anyway, that uh, the comments under that ended up having a lot of really great feedback about what we could do to make the platform better to help attract more people to it and 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 keep growing it, right? Because that's going to be it's going to get tougher as we go harder on manufacturers. I think there are going to be significant sponsors that walk away from us, and that's something that I've had to kind of steal myself for because. We we can't have it both ways, right? We can't have hey, we're going to be brutally honest, but also we're going to sweep things under the rug when it's convenient, right? So sponsors are going to have to just put on their big kid pants and deal with some that of them do. Sometimes we're going to be critical of them, and other times we're going to be engaging with them in a sponsored capacity, and that's just the way it has to be. If you want access to our audience who trusts us because we're going to give it to them straight then you're just going to have to take your lumps when they come, right? And 
Um, oh, I forget where I was going with this. Right, right, right. So, so these great suggestions to help grow this community, which we're going to become more reliant on. Uh, one of the one of the ones I saw over and over again is, you need a Roku app, and the first question that or came to my mind: various smart TV, Nvidia Shield app, Apple TV app. Yeah, but Roku Fire Stick app is the one that I saw the most. And Roku's have existed since back when I was working at NCIX. Best Buy for me. I didn't understand the reason that they existed then. Me neither. And I don't understand the reason that they exist now. Me neither. So I really want this to be a super interactive topic with you guys, did, the community, Roku did, lovers. I want to know. I want to know why. Did people buy them from NCX? A handful, yeah. Because I, I used to work at Best Buy. No one ever bought them from Best Buy. Well, that's okay. And when I say some people, I mean like we would sell three a week. Yeah. Like like not a significant number. So I just didn't get it. Like compared to something like the, um, do you remember Popcorn Time? Yeah. Yeah. So compared to the, like Popcorn Time, which was like a, a super, super clean way of torrenting movies back in the day. It's actually not, crazy. Not only would you torrent the movies, but there was a great interface for browsing them, like very Netflix-esque. And then instead of waiting for the whole thing to download and then playing it, Popcorn Time had figured out how to download the chunks in order and serve the video to you as it's streaming down. So it would essentially, you would stream it really like Netflix, but then you would, ha yeah, but then you would have the full file at the end of streaming it like torrenting. Uh, it was kind of mind blowing. Obviously it was like illegal and I, to my knowledge doesn't exist anymore. Maybe it does. But then there was also the Patriot box office whose main function was it was really easy to access in that particular case. Uh, I think it was like oh. Korean soaps and um, and like Chinese shows and stuff like that. So, I mean, we would sell hundreds a week of devices like that. But, you know, Roku, especially back then when almost no one was paying for you know, like web, web co video content, uh, I, I just, I didn't really get it then. And nowadays, I mean... There's your TV, which probably has a lot of apps for it already. There's the NVIDIA Shield, which, I mean, whatever whatever I might think of NVIDIA, the Shield is basically just an absolute no-brainer for me if you want a smart interface for a TV that either doesn't have one or has a poor one. Shield's uh, expensive. Yes. I don't know how much Roku costs at all. They have high-end models. Have have we gotten any like really great feedback from people? Something that I saw that I'm looking into. Yeah. Um, and it does totally seem like it's a thing. Is there's a a bunch of TVs that have Roku in yes. integration by TCL default. TCL has built in Roku. Not just that, RCA, TCL, on. Uh, ONN is uh, Walmart's house brand. High Sense. Um. Yeah, and like they're available at. Costco, which is probably where a lot of them come from. Walmart, which is probably where yeah, a lot of them come from. something being available isn't a reason to buy one. No, but if there's a TV at Costco, a lot of people are probably going to assume that it's at least a decent offer. Like, I bet you Costco moves a lot of TVs. Oh, I see. You mean a lot of the ones, a lot, a lot of the of TVs volume. at Costco have onboard Roku. I, I think so. There's multiple TVs at Costco that have it. Got it. Uh, okay. Because it looks like, yeah, there's three different Hisense TVs at Costco that have Roku built in. Okay. All right. What else we got here? Um, some other people saying that they prefer Roku to their TV's already existing smart TV stuff. Kubla says, I love mine because it's more reliably updated and performs better than the built-in TV apps. I can also take it on vacation. Yeah. That Okay. So that wraps in actually a lot of other feedback that I've seen. Okay. Hammy3D says cracking a fire stick is the best way at the moment. So that might be a good reason to, to have one of those. The remote is good, says Dextrous Man X76. Um, Ninja, Ninja Man Away over on Floatplane Chat says my ISP gave me my ISP gave me their streaming box for free, but it's a rebranded Roku. Okay, that I didn't know. That's interesting. So basically it, way more like people are using these. Than I realized. I guess probably me as well. Okay. So is this something... But man, like... 
Oh, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. I, I can't I can't promise else. guys. Yeah, building a whole new platform just because I don't think it's Yeah. Okay, this is a good point. Joseph says, "My grandparents got a Roku because they didn't know Chromecast existed." Yeah, like if you want a low cast op or a low cost option, Chromecast? I like I still I don't know. It's one of the, Okay. It's one of those things that I look at and I go, "Yes. I see the value add." I just don't see the value add compared to other options. Yeah, if either. I wanted a super premium option, I would absolutely get a Shield. If I wanted a budget option, I would go for a Chromecast. Or I'm sure there are like low cost, uh, you know, rando ones that you can also get. Yeah, there is. And like, I've never personally used it, but yeah. but this app has actually existed for... A really long time now. Um, Which one? Should I show your screen? Hydrovion. You can, sure. And like, again, I haven't personally used it. Um, oh, seriously? But this has existed <laughs> for an extremely long time. And everyone that I know that uses it says that it's good. Um, and it like works with your different subscriptions. Like it shows there. There's, oh. there's like it works with. So if you're subscribed to LTT and in this example, Bitwit Ultra or whatever else, it, it should work with all of that. You can browse your various channels. Like I, I've heard very good things about this. Um, okay. I should probably reach out to BML Zoo Town at some point. Yeah. That and maybe just get him to like make it officially for us or something. Yeah. Yeah. I don't maybe know. Could pay. Uh, I don't have any money right now, but maybe someday we could pay for it. it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right. Yeah. But like but yeah, like honestly the the uh a lot of the team is sick right now is what I will say without getting into specifics. Yeah, that's fair. Um and the dev bandwidth that we have to be able to type of kind of spread around is very limited currently. Um I am hiring a speaking of having no money. Um I am hiring a back end developer to try to come in and help support the Flowplane team. Cool. Um and but but it's gonna like take some time for that person to get onboarded and there's there's other extremely important things on the roadmap that would have to get done ahead of time etc cetera, etc cetera. but yeah all right <clears throat> um i guess it's the point in the show where we take some merch messages bell do you want to hit me with some merch messages i would love to from reed what are your thoughts on the new varho making a vr headset with a brain controlled interface do you think that's what could make the push from for VR to become less of an experience and more of an everyday product? Uh, I would say that the brain control interface stuff would have to be way better than any version I have ever used. <laughs> um, and I doubt it. <laughs> um, if it was, then sweet. But I find a lot of them end up turning into... Um, uh, less less like neural impulse control and more uh facial muscle movements um because you actually get a lot more man it's been a long time since i've read this up so i'm going to say some things wrong but like the electrical whatever stuff you get a lot more of it by just like smiling right okay. <laughs> so so a lot of it ends up being like you just move your face around and that inter interfaces with it better um but i mean it, it, I've, maybe they have a way better version I don't know. I'd love to try this thing yeah. at the very least. Yeah, uh, for apparently sure. Apparently, it's crazy, crazy high resolution. And I think it costs like two grand or something like that. Like, what? Damn. Oh, the arrow. Well, okay. I think the arrow is not the like crazy. Oh, okay. Well, that one's two grand. So there's that. Uh, man. I... Could it possibly be worth double a Valve Index? Uh yeah, Valve Index is kind of old at this point. I guess that's I guess that's fair. Especially in a market that's like so cutting edge. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's I guess that's fair. It's just it's easy to forget two hundred hertz. Oh no, that's the eye tracking. I guess it's easy to forget that there's a ton of other VR headset companies out there. They just are almost all focused on commercial products because that's where the money is. Someone tagged me saying EEG. It's not an EEG, though. <laughs> They're not, like, wiring you up. 
I don't, I seriously doubt that a company is going to trust end users to wire themselves up with an EEG properly. Um, like that's, I, I, I've never seen this product. I didn't pay enough attention when you were showing it on screen to look for how they did it. Mm -hmm. I can pretty much guarantee you they didn't do it that way. <laughs> um, so it's, yeah, I don't know. Um, again, if it's way better, that's fantastic. I'm not saying it isn't. I'm just saying the ones that I have used were like far from ready for that type of application, but, or they're far from ready to rely on. Yeah. We've had a lot of people interested in the backpack and screwdriver. So shout out to that. A couple of you last questions relating uh, to specifics. Do you know if the screwdriver uh, will take little heads from other brands? Uh, yes, Bits. but you'll need an adapter. I believe the iFixit kit comes with an adapter for their small bits to uh what is it a quarter inch hex drive I, th I think is the like the standard one and yes there would be there would be absolutely no hey. reason for that to not for that to not work we just passed twenty one thousand subscribers on Flowplane. oh nice let's go we also have almost fifteen thousand people watching on youtube this is the best viewed uh wan show in quite some time thanks nice. guys thanks for tuning in everyone hit us uh another question relating to the backpack uh is there any sort of weather resistance uh, it does have weather resistant zippers, and we have had the uh, we have had the fabric tested by an independent third party. It's not, you're not going to be able to dunk it underwater, like it's not designed for that. But if you were, you know, if you had a 20 minute commute, you know, on your bike, and it's oh no, it started raining, it, you'll you'll be fine. So I just want to jump in really quick. Some people are talking about the. Uh, EEG thing. Uh, yes, it is. It is facial. Uh, some people have confirmed that it is facial, and I, I bet you, because it's facial, there's going to be huge amounts of interference from you moving your face. And if you ever want right. to be in an application where you'd have like a voice call, you talking is probably going to introduce lots of problems. Now, if they can prove me wrong, like I said earlier, that's awesome. I don't want to be right about this. It sounds like it could be really cool. Um, I just have never seen one that's anywhere near ready for a, to, to be relied on in this type of situation. Um, and I doubt that it is ready, but if it is, that's great. I would, I would love to be wrong. That explains a ton. I mean, obviously at that price, it would come with a free facial. Oh. <laughs> Next. <laughs> no, we got to let him sit in that for a second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nick Light asks, what's that nice lanyard uh, beside your water bottle? Oh, yes. We finally launched the lanyard that I've been wearing for like the last... It's upside down. Oh. We finally launched the lanyard that I've been wearing for like the last six months. It's the wanyard. <laughs> uh, Anthony it. named it. That's Anthony named good. it. It's That's his fault. Good. It's pretty. It's a pretty cute name. It's our standard black lanyard. It's a little bit longer than the old ones. We actually did get some feedback that for people who wear them around their neck, it was just a touch short. Uh, so it's a touch longer. We haven't we haven't you know officially you know revved it or anything like that, but I think it's like an inch longer on each side or something like that. Uh, so it's got orange uh, orange um, uh, uh, what would it be like embroidery? Whatever it is, orange stitching for the Linus Tech Tips, and then it's it's a it's a black lanyard. So yeah, like I said, that's the one that's the one I've been using. Love it. Definitely has a nice little pop to it. And then we also have a deal to announce. This week we are going to be running the uh, offer code. Where is it? I can't find it. Summer sweat discount. We uh, I know it's June. But we are overstocked on sweat kits. <laughs> so, because we are also a little bit overstocked on um, beanies right now, if you pick up a sweat kit and a beanie, you will get a $20 discount code automatically applied to your order. Dun, 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 dun. Really great feedback on the Swacket. It's exactly the same garment that has four and a half stars from all the other folks who have bought it over the years. Um, yeah, there you go. So you guys can check that out. The I don't believe you have to do anything special. Let me just check. Yeah, if you add a Swacket and a beanie, 
the discount will apply automatically. So you guys can go check that out at lttstore.com. All right, what's our next topic? You really want to talk about Tim Hortons tracking people, don't you? Not really, to be honest. Oh, okay. I just thought it was funny. What do you want to do then? Basically, everyone's tracking everyone. Don't trust anything with your data ever. And if you install an app, it, there's a very high chance that it's like doing bad things. Do you prefer the military secret sub worth under thing? Okay. I don't know what's going on here, but I read that title. It's very funny. Okay. Um, apparently, I, I, I knew this happened. And I'm pretty sure we talked about it on WAN show, like, in the old set. I think that's the right time frame for it. This is the dumbest shiz, man. But apparently, another classified document has shown up on the War Thunder forums in order to quell an argument, making this <laughs> apparently the third time in a year on the exact same forums that this has happened. A classified military document. <laughs> this okay. time, apparently, a Chinese tank crew member leaked classified information about a tank shell, including a part of the shell itself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, the tank shell in question is the type DTC 10 125 millimeter armor piercing fin stabilized discarding Sabo, uh, Sabo round used in the type 96 and type 99 series main battle tanks. The document indicates the velocity, precision, penetration <laughs> rate, <laughs> physical structure of the penetrator, primer type, physical structure of the penetrator. Oh yeah. Nice. Nice. Uh, primer type and handling instructions. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine? Can you imagine violating a government military NDA to settle an argument nah, bro. on a forum? <laughs> this tank is way better than you think. It needs a buff. <laughs> <laughs> I want to drive the tank that I drive in real life digitally, and it needs to be just as good. <laughs> yeah. 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 So epic. Oh, man. I just, I I can't even. And the fact that this is happening on a regular basis. I mean, like, okay, this is, this is our discussion. This is our discussion topic here. Um, while the idea that people will leak national security information that could get themselves potentially killed, right? Because if you have access to this information, presumably it's like your gear, right? Uh, that could get themselves yeah. killed in order to win an argument. While that's hilarious, the end result is that these crew members, if they are crew members, they might not be crew members. They might be designers. We don't know, are harming themselves. Or working like logistics or something weird. Who knows? Um, Anthony says... As one YouTuber I watch who plays DCS, Growling Sidewinder puts it, Wikipedia data is wrong on purpose. No country is going to give out the real specs for their stuff because then potential adversaries will know how to defend against it. If a guy leaks data because they don't like how the game simulates their hardware, guess what? You then need to scrap it and start over from scratch. Like, war is bad. Yes! I am I am across the board against violence from one human being to another human being. Yeah, okay. But if a belligerent nation knows how to bypass another's defenses, then they could be emboldened to act. And then everyone is going to have a bad time because war is bad. There are knock-on effects from any conflicts that are going to, no matter how far away you are, are going to affect you. I mean, there's all the grain that's rotting in Ukraine right now, for example. That's terrible. People who had nothing to do with this conflict are going to die. Yeah. Like A huge amount of the world's calories come from there. There will be people that starve because of this. And and like it's not just gonna stop. Like if there's a if there's a, a truce signed or whatever, it's it's not like they have to plant. And then grow. The dumbest part of all of this is that Gaijin, War Thunder's developer, in the past has already demonstrated that they refuse to use this leaked information in the game because they don't want to incentivize people to leak classified military documents because that's actually a bad thing. That makes sense. 
Oh, so why don't we talk about the other two incidents? In July 2021, a player was arguing about the British Challenger 2 main battle tank. To settle the disagreement, they posted basically the tank's operating manual, an action that quickly got the UK Ministry of Defence involved. Then three months later, a French player claiming to be a crew member in a Leclerc Serie 2 tank in service since 1992, again got into an argument about the capabilities of their tank, my tank, your tank, and again posted part of the tank's operation manual. Come on, guys! Wow. The, the, the round that you were talking about before is apparently a next-gen round. This isn't even old tech. Yeah. That's crazy. All right. What else do we want to talk about today? Actually, why don't you hit us with a couple more merch messages? All right. From Joshua, we talk a lot about our favorite tech, but what's one of the worst tech products you've ever bought? I feel like we had this question like last week. Or yeah, something. I feel like we did. I'm not real stoked on my smart switches right now, <laughs> but that that could not be entirely Jasco's fault. We'll, we'll we'll work on that. We're gonna work on that. I feel like I've dodged a lot of bullets. Um, yeah. Like, uh, what was that? Oh man, what was that Android console? Ooh yeah. Ooh yeah. Yeah, yeah, like the like, there's been a lot of stuff. Like I, I enjoy. We've talked about this with the with the Steam Deck, right? Sure. I enjoy being really, really early with new stuff. Sure. Um, so you'd think by doing that that I would have been caught by a bunch of stuff that was like very below expectations, but it hasn't been that bad because I think I've seen a lot of them coming. <laughs> I've definitely bought some dumb stuff, but it yeah. would have mostly been on purpose, like the Spud. The spontaneous pop-up display, that little like folding projector. Second, you should look it up. Spud monitor, uh, or like Jibo. Okay, I bought a Jibo for eight hundred dollars. Did you, did you or think whatever. that was going to be? Good? No, I thought it was okay. going to be terrible. I yeah. I literally spent money to make money. I invested in a Jibo. I am the one Jibo investor who made out like a bandit on Jibo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is interesting. Yeah, I would have thought this would have been bad. Here, I'll get it on your screen. It's yeah. sold out. Wow. Well, yeah, it's sold out because they don't make anymore. They don't make them. Apparently, they're coming back with a sequel or something. Really? I don't know. Someone mentioned it to me in the writers' meeting, and I was kind of going, mm, "Really, you guys?" Do this again. I get. I don't think someone asked for a hammer update. I don't think you can count the hammer. Yeah, because you never actually got it. Yeah, that's fair enough. All right, hit me. From Tommy, what does an LTT script look like? Is it like oh. a script for TV or movie? You gonna uh, show one? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll show one. Sure, why not? Should I show one for one that hasn't come out yet? No. <gasps> no? Really? No. You don't want it to be spicy? No. Oh, all right. Upload it on Flowplane as text. Um, don't show it on Wayne's show. Okay, let me uh, let we me. Got a, we got a $13 million building to pay for. Okay, here's one. All right, so uh, bu 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 bu. hold on. Let me just make sure Linus's screen is like mostly sanitized. Oh boy. Uh, yeah, Linus's screen should be pretty good now. All right, here we go. So here's the. Oh crap! I don't. Well, I don't have Word on here, so I guess. Oh, the juice machine, the juice press thing. Yeah, but I don't Juicero. think. Juicero. Yeah, neither of us bought. Neither one. of us bought that because it was like obviously it was stupid. Obviously stupid. Yeah. <laughs> no offense, if you bought one. Yeah. Okay. This is this is what it looks like. Uh, everyone, please ensure that the video title is the same for the folder name, script name, Trello card, and calendar entry for the editors, the Premiere project file, sequence, exported video file, etc. Uh, you're supposed to put the author, but I wrote this one, so I didn't bother because uh, the rules don't apply to me, apparently. I, I'm just real. I'm really sloppy about these because people will cover for me. Thank you, everyone. I love my team. Uh, we have a float plane title, which is usually pretty plain Jane because that's what float plane likes. And then we'll we have some YouTube title ideas. Um, typically, we'll have anywhere between two or three, all the way up to ten to fifteen potential title ideas. Uh, sometimes it's a lot harder to come up with a title. Uh, we also put a slogan in here still. We don't always roll an intro anymore, but if we do, we have it here. I don't think we rolled an intro on this one, but that's a really funny slogan. I'm inside Intel. Get it? <laughs> All right. It's pretty good. Thumbnail ideas. Uh, Product links are expected to be here so that when it comes time to actually post the video, we can have all the applicable product links. Uh, we're supposed to write up a little description like Linus goes full... 
Monty, uh, wait, no, that's not it. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, Linus gets a uh, behind the scenes of Intel, you know, whatever. Throw some keywords in there, that kind of thing. People are roasting the formatting, asking if it's normally centered. I, I don't believe it's normally centered. Centered? Why would it be centered? And I don't think Ew. you need fancy formatting for this, to be honest. Yeah, this is all this is all just reference material that would be duplicated yeah. on Trello anyway. Uh, there's some reference stuff here, just in case people, you know, need links to, hey, if you're screen recording, make sure you check out the document for how to do that. Uh, we have the video Bible. This is really important. Every video should have a hook that grabs people's attention. You should address the title and thumbnail in the first 10 to 20 seconds. A naturally embedded relevant merch call out. We've definitely let the relevant um, part lapse a little bit. Maybe we could work on that a bit. <laughs> An affiliate link call out. We've actually replaced this with a call out for Floatplane quite Yay. recently. So that's part of why Floatplane subscriber numbers are going up right for now. For sure. Yep. An upcoming video that should compel people to subscribe. We've done away with this one because our new subscriber rate is atrocious anyway. So why bother? We'll just focus on making sure we're getting served in uh, suggested videos because that's where most of our viewership comes from anyway. A throw to a compelling related video the viewer might want to watch. We do that at the end just to try and try and retain people. Like say, hey, if you enjoyed this, maybe you'll also enjoy that. A primo gifable moment. Uh, we see gifs of you know me and uh, the rest of the team here as a really great uh, as a really great marketing exercise. You know, just just more exposure uh, for us. So we, we you know we always try and we always try and put fun little fun little gifable moments into the videos. Gifable. Deal with it. <sighs> Um, this is a shot that I forgot to get. Where is it? Yeah. OTS of someone blocking Linus partially and Linus eyes closed, waving hand away like no, 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 indicating refusing a check. We forgot to get this. Uh, we did get this one. This was just like me making little notes. This isn't normally in the template. Any props we need? It's nice to get that. Uh, I had the intro that was shot the previous day when I thought it was going to be sponsored. Um, so I have, hey, make sure you use that. And it's supposed to say until sponsored this video, cut it off hard here. Um, cause I, that was supposed to have the sponsorship disclosure in it, but it, we didn't end up having it be sponsored because I wanted to make sure that I could just say whatever I needed to say without them being able to push back on it. Uh, Intel tends to be very sensitive about things like their internal processes and, and engineering facilities. So I feel like if it had been sponsored the way it was supposed to, like a fully sponsored video, they would have expected to dictate a lot more of the content. And I just I saw that place and I was like, nah, dog. We may never look at this again. It needs to be everything. Um, all right. So then this is what the script looks like. Intel sponsored this vid, cut it off hard here. At least they tried. I've never done this before, but shortly after I arrived at Intel's Israel Design Center, I ripped up the previously agreed upon sponsorship check. So here you're basically seeing what is in the video um these marks here tend to be for if i'm moving locations so two four is going to be in the validation lab uh, you can see three one so this is like a completely different segment um three two is where we kind of move to a different part of that room uh, at the end you'll see you know any sponsor spots or anything like that we've actually recently started shooting those separately and then just chopping them into the video again so you won't see those anymore the thing you're missing, and this could be partly because it's a script by me and I tend not to write guidance <clears throat> sometimes because I'm busy. Um, it could also be because I opened it in WordPad rather than in Word, but we often have annotations in the right margin that will highlight, so they're comments, right? So you highlight the text that you want covered and then you'll annotate a graph that's supposed to have coverage there or a B-roll shot or um like text that you want to appear on screen or if you want a simple animation done then that'll be on the side and that's uh that's what they look like i'm not sure i'm not sure how that compares to whatever your expectations were but for better or for worse that's it very nice uh from edward what's been the most surprising part of the growth of lmg over the last couple of years how much it costs? <laughs> I don't know. Speed. Uh probably create a warehouse. Spin fast. I mean, I was I was I was pretty bearish on the on the whole physical goods business. And there still are challenges. Like it's not nearly as profitable as it kind of like seems to be. You know, you look at the gross margin on on a product and it might be like, oh yeah, you know, you're making uh, of that ten dollars, five dollars is is profit. But mm, 
actually, by the time you account for handling fees and packing materials <clears throat> and uh, transaction uh, overhead and you account for the, transaction overhead's big. the uh, people who had to work on that product and, and all of that stuff. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, prices could be a little higher. <laughs> that sort of thing. <laughs> From Dean, I have a question for Luke. You said a week or two ago that you may not get the Steam Deck when your email comes. Yeah. Is there a different handheld you would consider or using SteamOS instead of Windows? Not really, to be completely honest. Um, the SteamOS versus Windows thing doesn't really matter to me. Um, I don't mind. Uh, like, like from doing the Linux challenge, I don't think I mind Linux in that situation. Uh, no problem with it there. Yeah. Um, and so SteamOS is... It's Linux, but it's like... Smoother. <laughs> It's yeah, I, I've heard good things about it. So that's yeah. that that part doesn't really matter to me much. Um, and I was mostly interested because I, I, I mostly wanted one because I really respected their approach to right to repair what they're planning on doing with iFixit, which has started coming to fruition, which is really cool. Yeah, it's super um, cool. And I wanted to see kind of how this thing grew. Um, but now by the time I get it, it's going to be like old. So I yeah, I'm still not necessarily. I don't know. I haven't fully decided, but I probably won't end up actually buying it. I'll That's... take yours. Yeah, I'm sure you'll be able to find a taker for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'll probably just offload it. Oh, man. Well, this is annoying. Google is apparently killing location based reminders in the assistant. Man, I, I have had. <laughs> I have had a very frustrating week with Google Assistant. Can I show you something really stupid? Can I, can I show you something stupid yeah. right now? Yeah. Okay. This is my Google News feed. Oh, no. Sorry. Hold on a second. I, so I set, I set reminders to set alarms because I don't trust the reminders to actually get my attention. Oh, yeah. No, reminders are horrible. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, they're useless. I, I always remind myself with alarms, but that's completely... That's completely separate. Okay, so this is my Google News feed. How would you categorize uh, these these topics as we go through? Tech, tech, uh, movie, film, whatever. Tech, uh, business, tech, uh, business, government, something like that. Tech, tech. It's mostly tech. Okay. Yeah. All right. Because I own Linus Media Group, I have gotten in the habit of using my Linus Media Group email account as my primary Google account. This is a paid account. It was called a G Suite account. It used to be called Google Apps. Now it's called G Suite. That's not the point. The point is that I am a paying ass customer for my Gmail. So you should get less features than free customers. Hold on. For my Gmail, my Google Drive, basically any other service that I use. One nice feature is what did you not see in here? Uh, I, I Starts with A and ends with does. Advertisements. Okay. No ads, yeah. right? Which is, okay, that's fairly nice. Also, I would expect it given that I pay actually a significant amount of money to Google now that we are up to like, what are we up to? 70 people oh, yeah. plus float plane. Like, yeah. Okay, so the problem the full plane bill is cheaper because we don't have as much drive space as you guys. My drive is 98% full on my full plane email. <laughs> the problem is that Google has time and time again treated G Suite users as second class citizens. Oh, yeah, absolutely. There was a period of over a year where reminders, aside from being garbage and there not being an easy way to set a decently long ringtone for them, um, there was a period of over a year where reminders didn't work. You literally got an error that was like, yeah, reminders are not available for, for G Suite users. Why? 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 Take that code and put it there. Well, no, but. But do it. Yeah. No, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Now, let me show you something. Open the front right garage door. Oh, I saw this. 
Okay, so no, this is not. No, no, no. No, no, my tweet last night about open the right front garage door and it opening like the back garage door. No, no, that's separate from this. That's just oh. that's just natural language processing being still amazingly crappy. No, no, this is this is separate, okay? So here, hold on. Open the front right garage door. Sorry, I don't understand. Okay. Because yeah, why? Like that seems like that should be something that it should get. I don't. I don't understand. Yeah. For Google for Home, which is a separate app. Okay, so I got my Home app. Right. This is where you add your devices and stuff. Right. Okay. So you can add your your thermostats and your speakers and your garage doors, all your all your smart home crap. Okay. If I try to invite a home member, let's say for example that I was to try to invite. Uh, Luke. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to, no, no, you're not going to need that. Okay. Because I'm going to go through, I'm going to invite you. Can't send the invitation at the moment. Try again, try again, try again, try again. Why? Because you're a G Suite user. Oh, no way. <laughs> you may not. Oh, oh, oh. The best part was that I was, I was as a G Suite user, I was the owner of the home. But I couldn't invite G Suite users or non G Suite users because I was a G Suite user. I had to change so that a non G Suite oh. user owned it, and then I couldn't invite G Suite users at all. So I'm allowed to own it as a G Suite user, but I am not allowed to invite G Suite users. And then if I am a regular at gmail.com user, I still cannot invite G Suite users to this home. That's so insane. But the error message is not meaningful. It just says, sorry, you couldn't do it. Try again. Okay, now this gets really frustrating. Now that I go into the home app and I sign into... I will admit, I, I hate uh, useless error messages. I will admit Floatplane has a few. Um, I would also argue that our team size is a little bit smaller than Google. Okay, so uh, I've yeah. switched over to my proper home one. Oh, are you, are you kidding me? Okay, there we go. I've switched over because because when it comes to different Google uh, uh, apps on your phone, right? So there's like your news feed and there's then there's home and there's, there's the assistant or whatever. They all sync. There's like your your like primary Google account, right? So watch this. Open the front right garage door. Sure. Opening the front right garage door. Okay. Because now I'm logged into my like proper yeah. home one. Yeah. Okay. But now I go to my news feed. Okay, I'd like you to categorize these things for me. Uh, business stuff. Business stuff, government stuff, whatever. Uh, medical stuff. Uh, business stuff. Add. Let's... Do you see any tech in here? Mm, very little. Okay, and or here's none. where it gets even worse. Bell, do you know how to adjust the focus on that? Okay, this is some next level dumb crap. This is Google being bad at their one job, okay? I'd like to fix this. Obviously, the best way would be if I could just import my work profile because now I'm stuck with this one if I want any of my smart home stuff to work, right? Right. I'm I because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna have go up in Can the Can you corner switch and, which account uses which thing? No. No. No, once you change it for one, it changes it for all of them. Thank you very much, Google. All right. Here's where it gets way dumber. Okay, can you guys hear me? I have no idea. So I go into my channels and interests, okay? So I'm gonna be like, hey, I like tech. Okay, following. This is all literally just random songs and, and artists from my YouTube music. If I block them, I have gone through and painstakingly blocked them all before. Okay, let's go back. They just come back, okay? It's just full of random music again. They are not in not interested, okay? I haven't hidden anything apparently. And there is no button anywhere to add interests. I thought your whole thing, I thought your whole thing is that you're supposed to want to know everything. I, I'm willful, I'm willingly telling you I would like to give you my personal information so that you may better tailor content to me. 
and you will not do it. It's so annoying. I can't pay my way out of this problem. I can't manually input data my way out of this problem. <laughs> and it's not like the, this is obviously, this is obviously not a life or death problem. It's just this is stupid. Annoying. Yeah. I, this is a very minor problem compared to that, but I, I have YouTube premium. Close the front right garage door. It's Sorry. A good, yeah. It's a good idea. Just, okay. Closing yeah. the front right garage door. Thanks, Google. Yeah. I, uh, so I have YouTube premium on my like personal account. But I, I tried to do the whole, and I, I like it this way much more. Uh, I'm thinking of migrating to Firefox again, trying that out. But uh, I like it this way much more where I have profiles. So yeah. I have different browser windows, yeah. depending on what the thing is. Sure. Um, and, and it's great. So I have my float plane when it's all colored blue, so I know when I'm in my correct work browser and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I don't have YouTube Premium on every Google account that I use, because oh, that would thing. be insane. I have it on my work one. Yeah. And now what? I'm going to buy it again? Like, no, that's crazy. So, and like, usually if I'm in my work one, I'm probably on float plane, right? So it doesn't matter. There's no ads. But I, if I do have to open a YouTube link for some reason and it opens up on my work one, then there's ads everywhere. And I'm like, oh, okay. I have to copy this out, open, close it on this one, open on this other one, watch it there, get rid of that browser when I'm done because now none of my work stuff is here. Jump back over to this one. It's just If I annoying. have one it's not account a big deal. logged in on my phone that has YouTube premium, it should count. Count it. Yeah. Like I'm not gonna buy separate YouTube premium. I have like twelve Google accounts logged in on my phone yeah. because of all the YouTube channels and all that stuff, right? Like it. Come on, stop treating G Suite users like second class citizens. So now my feed is full of ads, full of not tech, and if I want any of my home stuff to work, then. And if I want my YouTube premium to work, I just have to be constantly switching what profile I'm on. It's just really annoying. It's just stupid. Oh, yeah. Escapement Dog says also G Suite stopped supporting Google Wear too. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. It was just one thing after another after another. Like all these years, I forget all the times that I've been really annoyed trying to use a G Suite account as my daily driver account. I had a problem for a super long time where I couldn't change my profile picture. <laughs> and I was like, and it, it, it would just say like, there was an error with this photo or whatever. But I, I would try like a billion different photos and it would never work. And I was just like, well, I guess my account's just like broken because the error was like super weird. It had nothing to do with like permissions or account levels or whatever. It was just, there was a problem with this image. So I was like, oh, okay, whatever. And then eventually I figured out that someone else on the team couldn't change their profile picture either. And I was like, what? That's got to be a setting. So then I dove way through the settings, and by default, it has it off. Like, why? Why would this be off at any time? So I just turned it on, and then it worked fine. But, like, it doesn't tell... You were talking about the error being weird. It didn't tell me. Yeah, no. Why don't you just say that, yeah. then? Yeah, yeah. Maybe because when they say that, it generates a bunch of complaints that the feature doesn't work. Because <laughs> it should be on by default. Oh, so frustrating. So stupid. Uh, anyways, we have tons of topics this week. Yeah, uh, well, Jake's got to hit us with a couple more merch messages first. Mm. All right. All right, from Matthew. In your opinion, with... Oh, we're getting a, a ton of merch messages here. Just a second. <laughs> Back to being Matthew. In your opinion, with performance per generation leapfrogging and larger power draws coming, are we looking at performance plateaus with an increased focus on efficiency and usability or ever-increasing performance peaks. I think it's cyclical at this point. I mean, we've seen this in the past when architecturally they can't find a way to get a leg up on the competition. They'll push the power envelope. And obviously, it's better for the silicon to run cooler, fewer warranty issues. Uh, whenever they can, they'll try to run it as efficiently as possible. So I think we're just seeing whatever, we're seeing an ebb or a flow, yeah, whatever, whichever one is which right now. Yeah. Can you share the hilarious moment? I would love to. Um, uh, Callanan is uh, is helping us out with some sanding for like a paint project that yeah. uh, we're working on. Says thanks for closing the door on me. <laughs> Wait, so it was already open? I'm assuming. <laughs> Sorry. Oh man. Oh, Anthony is complaining about G Suite. G Suite also doesn't let you import data. You can export everything from a Google account, but good luck doing literally anything with it. <laughs> That's funny. That's pretty good. I didn't know that. Come on! 
<laughs> and like I could spend the next six months using my Google News Feed again because when I first started using it, it was crap. It was full of like Kim Kardashian and the Royals and just like all that absolute garbage that I couldn't possibly care less about. Uh, he says, no, it's not a problem. Just weirded me out. Okay, good. Um, Mine gets like, randomly obsessed with things. I was like, I am going to invest in this. I'm going to give this a chance because other people tell me it's really good. So I, I, I did. I stuck it out and it took months. And it's like really good now. Like it's like you, you saw, it's just full of tech. Yeah. Basically. Mine's pretty good, but every once in a while it'll latch onto something really weird. And even if I never click on it, it'll oh. just keep coming up, keep coming up, keeping up, and then it'll randomly disappear. I googled what the hell BTS was once, and just oh no, oh man, it was just full oh, no. of like whatever Jimin was wearing yesterday for a while. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, like, oh. like mine, I don't, cool, I don't like. You know, honestly, it seems like they do a lot of great stuff, but I don't care what Jimin's wearing. I'm no, like, yeah, yeah. I, I don't watch very many TV shows. I don't watch very many movies. Yeah. And I am not interested in actors or actresses pretty much at all. And randomly, I'll get like this person that I've very likely never heard of. And like every three articles will be about like some shirt they were wearing or something. Yeah. And I'm like, holy crap. I have never clicked on one of these and I don't care. And then like it'll keep happening for like three or four days and then it'll disappear and never come back again. Yeah. Like, why did it think that was a thing? One of the know. really frustrating Whatever. ones for me is one of your only interactions is not interested. Yeah. Right? You can't say, I want more of this. But the problem is right. that if you have literally already read it and it shows up, you can't say, like, I've had ones that show up over and over and over again. You can't say, it's less lately, but you can't say the thing that is the problem with this is that I already read it. Because that would be a really great signal. Uh, like I read this and yeah. enjoyed it or something like that. Yes. Yeah, yes, that I did sense. engage with this. I actually do like this, but I do not wish to click on it right now. Yeah, I I, re I think they didn't they used to have like a thumbs up, like more of I this. I thought so. Yeah. I thought Cause so. Because I remember tuning mine back in the day with like I like this, I don't like that. It's frustrating when economics take a front seat compared to the user experience. I've talked about this on WAN Show before, but one of my favorite features on Amazon back in the day was customers who viewed this ended up buying yeah. these things. And clearly that was interfering with their ability to put sponsored product showcases under them and it went away. And I was so was angry awesome. because it saved me so much time. I could just find approximately the thing that I was kind of looking for and someone else would have already done the work of digging through the trash heap that is Amazon's interface and finding the like handful of good ones so that I could pick the one that best suits my needs. It's so infuriating. Yeah. I do like, by the way, on Google News that you can block entire domains. Oh, I did not know that. That's actually sweet. I'll go to a site and just get like destroyed by ads. And I'll just back out and be like, never again. Oh, I should start doing that with like the paywall ones. Yes. It's at the point now where a quarter of the articles in mine are paywalls. I like, don't get any paywall stuff because I've blocked them all. Got it. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, it's sweet. From John, would you ever consider producing written content or written versions of our videos? <laughs> I often find myself looking for more articles on a product or topic rather than a video. Someone That's... linked me an old WAN show where you... Um, and me, I guess, technically, but we were, we were figuring out what we wanted to do with the forum. Yeah. And you were talking about how we were going to use vBulletin. And one of the main reasons why you wanted vBulletin was because it had this like powerful CMS behind it and you could r put written companions up with videos. So yeah, it's been considered. <laughs> What's this? This is it. This is the time Ed redesigned oh. the homepage of the Linus Tech Tips forum to, woo, woo, um, hold on, where's the, oh, here we go. Okay, so this is the mock-up of what LinusTechTips.com would have looked like before dark mode was the default for the universe. Yeah. Uh, so Linus Tech Tips, forums, members gallery, this was just a lot of placeholders. Um, We'd have, you know, headlines, still news use items. That banner. <laughs> Sorry? I think we still use that banner. Uh, yes, I think we do. <laughs> uh, there's, you know, your link to WAN Show. Got to love that ancient WAN Show logo. Heck yeah. I have no idea. This is obviously just crap that Ed put in here. 
Uh, let's have a look at some more things if you guys are interested in this. Here's what an article preview would look like. I think article Twitter preview, it says. I don't know what that means. Uh, we had this cool idea where we would have community submissions for news articles, kind of like just the news section on the forum, and there'd be a tip jar for the author. I thought that was kind of a, a cool idea. Um, just to encourage people to 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 like post more, uh, summarize, add their own thoughts. People who were really prolific and really good at it could potentially mm -hmm. like actually do pretty decent. Uh, this was, I think this might have been an earlier or later version of the homepage. Look at that old YouTube logo. Love it. Look at this date. <laughs> Oh man, this might be an earlier one. This might be an earlier one. What am I looking at here? Woo! Spicy. Top build logs. Remember when we used to feature build logs from the build log section of the forum? I yeah. That was yeah. awesome. I actually kind of miss that. Here's the compact. No, this one's this one's nothing. Linus's mock-up. Oh, okay. Apparently I did this. The headlines chosen by the community for the community. <laughs> I don't think I've ever shown this before. Never saw the light of day. Buy from our affiliates. I uh, saw this. Leave tips in the jar. No, no, yeah, to you, yeah. yeah but yeah. feature spot for leaves as fast as possible. Uh, top build logs, decaying mechanism and based on likes. Oh, yeah, interesting. Yeah, kind of, kind of cool idea. Kind of cool idea. Uh, yeah. Neat, huh? Well, now you saw a little piece of a uh, little piece of LTT history. Hope you enjoyed it. From yeah. Grant, will Linus be on there just movies again? Also, what made you start the series? Um, I I don't know if they invite me and I have time, I'd be happy to do it. As for what made me start it, uh, James, Riley, and David would always spend their work time talking about movies, and they had the idea of starting a podcast. And I was like, well, I guess it was on. It was during their carpool. They would spend a lot of time talking about them, and then it would bleed over into work time, and I'd hear them talking about it. And they were like, "Hey, we want to do like a movie podcast." And I was like, "Oh, cool. Let's uh, try and support that." And so we did. And so now we have the "They're Just Movies" podcast because they thought Carpool Critics was not as good of a name. Yeah, they no did. comment. They definitely did. I have no um, comment on the. I have no comment on the quality of "They're Just Movies." Instead of carpool, carpool critics, movie podcast. Uh, we we have a um, oh boy, where'd it go? I think I lost the comment. Uh, but it was a question about the newsletter. If we're gonna do another newsletter again, another newsletter. What kind of newsletter? I'm assuming the they're talking store. about the LTD store, because I wasn't sure either. Oh yes, they're supposed to do them like every week or every other week. <laughs> So they've just been they've just been swamped, right? Like they just moved. They've got a lot of projects to ship, you know, backpacks, screwdrivers, lots of other things that we've got going on behind the scenes. Just yeah, it just takes time. So I am also not commenting, but Flowplane Chat is I think unanimously saying that Carpool Critics is better. I I I have no comment on Floatplane Chat's comment. Yeah. Nope. Interesting. Me neither. Nope. Moving on. If you like Carpool Critics better, go like their latest video so we know that that you like the old name. That's some big brain stuff. Oh, man. This so guy. is this question from Anonymous. What do you think about the upcoming Google Pixel Watch that's coming out? Frankly, I have spent exactly zero of my precious brain cycles on the Google Pixel Watch because I have no hope for it whatsoever. And that might be me just being closed-minded, but... This is not the first time Google has said, no, for real, it's different this time. I will believe it when I see it. When it is on my wrist and it's amazing, I will be amazed. Otherwise, I just, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not going to become emotionally invested in this thing. I'm sorry. I just can't do it. What's this? Uh, this is a Withings, um, ah, crap. What's it called again? Smart something can't remember it's a withings watch full disclosure uh the reason i have it is that they did a sponsorship but uh turning off my sponsored hat because they sure as heck didn't sponsor this i'm enjoying it so far it's got kind of everything you need it looks um very traditional yeah nothing you you don't oh so it's just a little screen there yeah spo2 and ecg monitoring um it does log workouts and steps and stuff like that but i was at the point where i just 
was finding my smartwatch so useless that I basically just used it to tell the time anyway. And this does that great. And, and that it lasts part, for almost a month on battery. And that part, I'm assuming, will last even longer than that. The time? No, because it appears to be very digitally controlled. Gotcha. If the electronics die inside, I'm pretty sure the arms stop arming. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Because you can set the time in the app and it'll be like, oh, Zhoop. oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Got it. That's it for merch messages, but you do have a couple little unboxings. I don't know if you want to go through. Oh, no. Let's talk about some more topics. I wanted to talk about um, New York State actually passed a couple of really interesting bills. Uh, first up is the Fair Repair Act, where which stipulates that all manufacturers who sell digital electronic products within state borders must make tools, parts, and instructions for repair available to both consumers and independent shops. Heck yeah! Exceptions are made for home appliances why medical devices mm. okay and this last one and agricultural equipment don't like that don't like that at all that's got to be some john deere lobbying right yes, there yes that's exactly it the 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 medical devices one i don't know oh that one i don't know enough things that would fall in that category and I don't there's know how a lot of liability there, there. yeah there's I mean, honestly, though, you talk to people in the medical field, they're extremely frustrated that medicine costs so much because of things like really restrictive contracts for the repair and upkeep of these devices. But there's also a lot also, of liability. It depends it... what it is. And like, if you take the liability away from the company, if you do self-repair, I think that's a thing that you should be able to uh, decide on your own right but like home appliances like come on dude yeah jeez I'm, I'm happy we're making progress right that's always a good thing but like yeah. these exceptions are dumb agreed uh what else we got here so the past legislature is awaiting signature from the governor they are expected to sign and this comes after biden issued an executive order calling on the ftc to enforce freaking repair rights all right so that's something good uh, iFixit said it expects this to take effect by 2023. Freaking awesome. In other news, New York passes a bill to limit Bitcoin mining. Hmm. It targets a specific form of crypto mining that uses the highly energy-intensive proof-of-work authentication method. Uh, this includes several popular digital currencies, including Bitcoin. If signed into law, this legislation will place a two-year ban on new permits being issued or existing permits being renewed to conduct proof-of-work authenticated cryptocurrency mining that relies on electricity generated from carbon-based fuels. So this is part of New York's climate okay. goals that require the state's <laughs> greenhouse gas emissions to be reduced by 85% by 2050 under the Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act. So if you found a way um, to, to work outside of carbon-based fuels, you could still do it. Yeah. Cool. In other news, Elon Sweet. Musk wants to cut 10% of Tesla jobs, but apparently the hourly headcount will increase, and this is mostly focused on salary employees. So that's another way of saying that you feel like you're a little top-heavy in terms, or middle-heavy in terms of management. Uh, Tesla shares fell 9% after the report, but honestly, man, I wouldn't read too much into that for... for I'm out of my, in, I'm out of my investments. I have, I have no current investments, but... I do just like maintain, I do, I just like look at particular like tech. I've got Intel, AMD, NVIDIA in here and it goes from huge green to big red day to day to day to day to day to day right now. 9% is um, a lot. 9% is a lot, but okay. it has been, it has been a uh, time of Coinbase turmoil. is down 9% today too. And yesterday, yeah, I but think I mean, they were up. Bitcoin has been getting. Or not Bitcoin. Coins in general have been getting kind of slaughtered over the last little bit. I mean, here's five days. So they'll go a day when they're up 10%. They'll go a day when they're down. They'll go a day when they're up. You got a, you got a couple of people calling you out for framework. That's not a publicly traded company, yeah, right? Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. I meant stocks. Stocks. Yeah. Yes, I still do. I still do hold my investment in framework. Uh, okay, AMC is a meme stock, so let's not use that one. I think... I think AMD... You, you still have stock in framework, right? Yes. You're talking tradable stocks. Yes, 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 yes. Or what? I don't know. I don't know what they're called. Yes, I still. The, technically, they are stocks. Yes, I. I have the two hundred and eighty, two hundred and thirty. I. I don't remember. I don't remember how much because, honestly, guys, wasn't the point. I wrote the check. 
and I hope that they succeed. That's it. That's all I can really do. I mean, I'd like to think that um, you guys have not noticed a difference in my treatment of Framework or other laptop manufacturers ever since the investment. I have actually had very little to do with our laptop content, but when I have had anything to do with it, I would hope you guys have seen no difference. If anything, my goal is to treat them like the coach's son, uh, be harder on them as opposed to being any easier on them. I had that experience. I actually enjoyed that, but... Being the coach's son? Yeah. My dad was a coach on like uh, basically every sports team I was on. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, and he was actually awesome. And no one ever, no one on the team, ever, like maybe the first day they'd be like, oh, coach's son, whatever. And then after it was like a couple weeks in, they'd be like, oh man, I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> 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 Which I preferred instead of everyone thinking I was getting special treatment. Um, yeah, it was great. I really enjoyed my dad coaching. Samsung's apparently getting out of the LCD market. Isn't that crazy? That is wacky. What, LCDs are just, no, forget it. We don't need LCDs anymore. As early as June, Samsung Display will stop producing LCD panels. They used to be the world's leading LCD panel manufacturer, but their market share has dropped to just 2% due to Chinese and Taiwanese competition. The Display Supply Chain Consultants, or DSCC, say the average price index of LCD panels will drop to 36.6 out of 100, down from 41.5 in April. So expect LCDs to get cheaper. And to be clear, this isn't, they're not leaving the like display market. No. They're just kind of moving on more than anything. They will now focus heavily on OLED and Quantum Dot, with most of their employees moving over to Quantum Dot. There's no official statement from Samsung yet. Our discussion question is, at what point do LCDs go the way of CRT? Never? Oh, I mean, they will eventually. They're, I think... There's it, better techs out there now. I think it'll be different. Because CRTs have this, like, cult following in existence. Bulky. Well, they're super bulky. But they have this cult following in existence because they have certain things that they're particularly really good at. Um, and I think that the technologies that are replacing LCD are going to replace them in a way that you there's there's no real draw to mm -hmm. go back to LCD where there is a draw to go back to CRT. Um, so I think LCD's death will be a little bit more permanent. Oh, I think that's fair. What would it <laughs> what would it take for you to use Windows on ARM? Microsoft just unveiled their mini, an ARM oh. desktop called Project Volterra. Um it was at this year's Build 2022 conference. This was actually from last week, but we didn't get to it, and I wanted to talk about it. It looks kind of like a headless Surface Studio. Here, let's pull up my screen here. Blah, 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 blah. Let's find the point in the it's video like where they show graphics. it. Um, it was developed in partnership with Qualcomm, so it's going to be using Snapdragon Silicon, which up until now has proven to be basically a big part of the reason that <clears throat> Windows on ARM is not very successful uh where, where are the bloody i just wouldn't dude that? i at this point i'm honestly like kind of barely holding on to using windows at all like the the linux challenge like really revealed to me that like it's not there but it's not that far mm -hmm. you know and like taking a worse version of windows is not really an option right now um yeah, it's everything you hate about Windows with everything that you hate about Windows. Yeah. Got it. Yep. Yeah, I'm not even remotely interested. That's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's fair enough. And I think that's pretty much it for the show. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you made it this far, hey, don't forget, we just launched the Lanyard, black and orange version of the Lanyard. And we have our summer sweat promotion running right now. It's buy a Swacket and a beanie together. Just add them to your cart and you get 20 bucks off and you will be ready for the fall <laughs> in June. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we'll still have Swackets in the fall probably. So it should be fine. We'll be as cheap though. See you next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Bye. Show is brought to you by Squarespace, Zoho Desk, and Wealthfront.
Uh-oh, I'm trying to... Hello? Where's the thing? I got it. 